This is Katie Schildmeyer with Chaos Apparel Design. And today I wanted to present to you uh, just a small little presentation on how I use 3D design to help uh, brands with size spectrum planning and also um, aesthetic and taste planning. So let's get into it. So today I wanted to address um, different aspects of how consumers learn information, but also what brands are doing well and what brands are not doing well in terms of conveying a lot of that information. Uh, some of the images that you will see are poorly designed on purpose um, in order for you to understand what brands kind of are doing that um, create a lot of fashion waste, create a lot of um, distasteful design uh, that doesn't really stick with customers well and they just don't understand why, as well as how I use 3D to really address body shape, uh, and what it can do to impact the health of your company. So let's um, look at this. First off, we've got uh, runway and shape. So in this case, we in the fashion industry, there's a lot of uh, runway knockoff that happen. And we typically frown upon that because it's um, not always great to be stealing somebody's idea, but it does happen. And so I want to to kind of take this image because this image, although it's great on the model, um, there, ha there are a lot of concerns that I would have as a designer in terms of knocking this off. Uh, the, the first one is the volume of the product. It's just very wide. And I know that if I put it onto different sizes or shapes or, or heights of people, I would be having some large issues um, across the board in terms of the aesthetic of design. We've also got the print and the length that are kind of fighting with the volume. Uh, from an art standpoint, an art theory standpoint, the more uh, defined the print is like this or the busier it is, when we wrap it around something, it actually makes that item look bigger than it really is. And that's something that a lot of consumers actually don't understand and they sh probably should. Um, the other aspect is length. When we're dealing with a dress this long, obviously we don't want it dragging on the ground because that ruins the, the product itself. It muddies it up. But we also have people that are different heights and um, a petite person obviously would be drowning in this, so they would never buy it. We've got a regular sized person where it might just barely touch the ground, so they wouldn't want to buy it. And then we have, obviously, a taller person that could wear this, and it might sit at the exactly right length. So what we did was we took this and designed it on a plus size customer to show how it can fall short. Also, what we do in terms of the knockoff process um, to benefit cost for consumers. So in this case, we took the print and kind of re-engineered it a little bit. Um, we also took away some of the vertical bands on the dress uh, that go across the different tiers of the skirt. And then we just ran with the vertical uh, ribbon and lace overlay on the chest. We also wanted to see what it would look like in a short knee length versus a longer length. Obviously, this design does not work well. Um, I probably would tell any company not to invest in this look uh, because it it is dated. It doesn't look tasteful. It's um, overall a poor design for the body shape. And when we actually put this into even the regular sizes, it was the same kind of feeling where there was just nothing really inviting about the look. Uh, so in this case, we can decide, well, you know, we're not going to execute that design and we haven't invested money in textiles or sampling or pattern making. We've really been able to just look at it and say, yeah, this, this doesn't translate. So 3D is great in that sense where I can kind of look at something before making a sample and saying this idea falls short, we're not going to execute it. 
The other aspect is addressing the body shape. So, uh, of course, there's several hundreds of body shapes uh, that body scanners have been able to see or variants within these categories of shapes. Um, and oftentimes people don't like to be called a pear or an apple. I understand that. But it is the similarity that allows us to kind of draw a conclusion on shape. Um, in this case, a lot of customers today actually do not understand body shape. Um, in the probably last 20 years, the online consumer has not been really educated well on shape. And so we have a whole generation of kids, now adults, that actually really don't understand their shape. And so when something happens uh, from, let's say, they have never been pregnant, they all of a sudden find themselves pregnant, they're having a baby, they go back to the same brand that they shopped with, and they buy the same fit that they shopped with um, before their pregnancy, only to find out that it doesn't fit. Their body shape has changed, and they don't understand why. So... In the past, people uh, quite frankly understood that their body shape would change, and that's because somebody was um, active in helping them out in a store and educating them on something that fit and didn't fit. So uh, store salespeople were really integral in helping consumers understand what would work and what didn't work. Uh, and that's something that our e-commerce areas can do better in, uh, quite frankly, and really ask customers questions about their body shape and then make size offerings or product offerings for that shape uh, rather than um, allowing them to shop the entire site only to find out that everything that they like does not fit their shape. So, in this example, we've got, um, obviously, a lot of different women that were scanned uh, in this case study. And by scanning the women, they were able to see, um, obviously, clear margins of women that were wearing different sizes or different shapes. Um, and what this can do, actually, for a brand is really help a brand design their market products uh, to fit the different shapes or say, you know, we've got um, a lot of spoon and rectangle. Is there a shape that we can design that will fit both of these shapes? Is there a product that works for both of these shapes so that we're really encompassing as many people as possible? Uh, so in that sense, I think that using 3D body scanners within the store, being able to gather and collect the data or even just asking these questions online can really help a brand begin to design products that really meet the consumer's shape needs. Because at the end of the day, the shape is actually really the defining piece for fit. Um, you know, I can go in and try on a size 10 in a product that's designed for a rectangle, and I can try on the size 10 in a product that's designed for an hourglass. I have an hourglass figure and I'm gonna fit that size 10 much better than I ever would in the rectangle shape. So even though they're the same size, one will fit me, one will not. And the defining margin to that is the shape. Uh, so brands can do a much better job of really um, trying to collect shape data as well as discuss shape and show product on different shapes uh, within the website. So um, this is a size 10 on an hourglass. This is a size 10 on a rectangle. Does it work? Does it not? Show them why it isn't working is the biggest learning aspect that you can give a customer. Uh, then it's also transparency of, of being able to create uh, brand diversity in size as well as shape. So 
let's say you are a startup brand, you only have a hundred thousand dollar capital, you're not gonna be able to create a product for every single shape that you'd want to. You might have to start off with two shapes and making very distinct product for those two shapes. Whereas, you know, a company like Levi can offer all of these different fits and have different swim lanes within those fits for style and being able to execute that in terms of cost. So really being transparent with your customer and saying, hey, we're a small size. We can't necessarily offer everything from a zero to a size 24. What we what we are doing is offering maybe a size 4 to 16 right now, or um, maybe it's that they're, they're only offering a size 10 through 16, and they're producing different styles and things, so more tops, more bottoms. Um, but more companies need to convey that to consumers because right now we have a council culture of consumers that say, oh, well, you're not delivering diversity to the people, but they don't understand the physical dynamics of that. And so being able to say, hey, we're small and it's expensive to do this, but we will get to it over time as we grow is a very, very integral part of a small company's health. And so being more transparent about your Ability to offer size inclusivity, shape inclusivity is going to be um, kind of a successful practice for companies over time rather than going to market and then having several people who don't understand the, the fiscal reality of getting into the industry basically cancel your business because you don't offer their size or their shape. So it's really, really important uh, to start also offering some of the transparency about how you design for your company. Um, In this slide, I wanted to show a successful style that works for different shapes. Uh, And so, of course, saying, okay, well, we want to be diverse and we want to offer a product that can fit various shapes and various sizes without uh, losing money on the product, it, you know, or it becoming a staple product, like a basic, uh, is this eight gore dress. I love using gores for curvy shapes as well as rectangular shapes because goring actually allows the fabric to work a little bit better with the body, especially, um, I mean, using it with knits works well, using it with wovens works even better uh, to convey that that shape. And so in this case, we've got the pair shape that's a size 22W, and then the rectangle body shape, which is a 20W petite body. Uh, and of course that body scan came from uh, Body Block AI, so I thank you. They are now actually called WAIR, W-A-I-R, and they have some of the largest uh, body scan database uh, for use in apparel as well as fitness um, in the United States. So I highly suggest checking out where and using their services. Uh, But in this case, the eight gore dress works really, really well for um, both body types. So I'm able to say to a customer that clicks on my website that they're a rectangle shape here's your size offering and here's your dress or shape offerings that that meet your shape needs. And I can use the same dress for the pear shape. I can also show these images within the item uh, category. So when a customer clicks on the dress and they look at the front, the back and the side, they can also see images of approved, like with a little like hand, uh, thumbs up, or um, this doesn't work for this shape. So they can, you know, put a hands down and then the customer knows, oh, that doesn't work for this shape and this is why it doesn't work for this shape. So they thereby learn by us showing examples of what isn't working as well as what is working. Uh, 
The next area that I also use 3D for uh, in, in terms of size testing is the textile as well as the silhouette. So again, like the first dress that I showed, we've got a busy print um, and we're using it in a wide leg pant on a satin fabric. It works really well for the size four. Uh, you can see that person wearing this with you know a cute little tank top and obviously their tennis shoes or um, again, pairing it with a matching blazer for a full suit look and a, a pair of really beautiful heels would uh, actually satisfy the consumer. Now, in the size 20W, the consumer's shape is lost. She doesn't have hips anymore. She just looks like a big rectangle, and yet her body is not a rectangle. It's actually a pear shape. So in this case, I might say we're going to make the wide leg pant a zero through a 14, and then from 16 to 28, we're going to create a tapered pant in this print. And then what we're going to do is put a blazer with it. And again, the blazer cut may look different than it does in the smaller size versus the larger size because I'm designing for the shape and the aesthetic at the same time. And I'm able to use the print throughout the collection. So my consumer may not be able to find one silhouette in every single size, but they might be able to find different prints in that textile that they may or may not like in defining products that actually work for their body shape, that are tasteful for that body shape, that makes sense with the brand coordinates, such as a blazer to make a full suit look. Um, and in this case, I would probably advise a customer and say, the pant alone doesn't really make sense. Uh, and you'd want to actually wear it as a unified suit. Uh, so the next area that we also use it for is textile placement. So instead of executing three different physical samples, I can execute three 3D samples and save uh, pattern makers time and um, also save the sewing team time in terms of you know, what they're actually executing. In this case, I might have an issue where I've got to buy a certain amount of textile yardage in the print to get a certain price. Uh, so I might actually have to use more than I wanted to use. And in this case, you can pick option three, which is going to use more of that brand or the textile yield. Whereas in dress two and dress one, I'm going to use the same amount of fabric. So um, it's just little changes where you can kind of test those things and say, you know what, yeah, we're actually going to stick with dress too, uh, you know, and stick with the yield that we have um, and maybe save it for something else, maybe headbands or, or whatnot, and just execute dress too because it makes more sense uh, for the brand kind of aesthetic. And then... Um, Another area is that shape uh, of the textile. So in this case, I've got one textile and the second textile that look pretty much near the same. One has a slight wave to it. The other one is completely uh, horizontal. And from a uh, textile pattern lineup, pattern one is much easier to work with. Uh, versus pattern two, I'm going to have a lot more fabric waste if I try to line up the wave of that pattern on the seam line. So in this case, I, as a designer, I'd probably say, oh, let's go with option one because we can do that if that's a focus factor for the brand. The other area that I also use 3D um, for is really specking graphic design prints and t-shirts, um, being able to use the, the graphic and place it on where that chest lines up uh, is very important for specking the distance between the collar and the top of the graphic. And so being able to see what that looks like as I grade out in size 
on a graphic t-shirt allows me to really define where that print goes on the shirt. And also from a quality control standpoint, we can make sure that that print is existing exactly where it should be. Uh, rather than using one spec across all sizes, which would then cause that uh, print to look like the extra large, where we've got it at the same spec as the small, um, obviously it looks too high on the shirt. And then we decided to lower it down to 22 centimeters and get the right grade on it uh, so that that textile or that graphic design actually looks like it would in the size small, same placement on the chest, um, and have uh, you know consistency through design. So from a quality control and specking standpoint in technical design, I love using it on graphic t-shirts. So in recap, uh, 3D tools are really excellent in designing or figuring out scale of textile prints, scale of graphics, placement of graphics, placement of prints. Uh, developing a startup size range uh, with aesthetic value at the same time. So being able to also convey that um, you're a small brand and you only have so much capital to make so many uh, products with is also an integral part of that. And using 3D in your blogs uh, to talk about that is something that I think is really um, wonderful that brands should start doing, actually. Uh, they can deliver garments that meet different shape needs. So being able to merchandise your line based on how many customers you might have that are an hourglass shape versus a triangle shape or an inverted triangle shape is really essential um, for maximizing profitability, especially as we're coming out of COVID-19, um, brands have executed less product, uh, of course, and design of lines is usually cut in half or even down to a third um, of what they used to produce. And they're also making more tops than bottoms because, of course, we're all on, on graphic um, or uh, video calls with each other rather than um, physical meetings. So we're seeing differences in what people are purchasing, of course, because of the need and the lifestyle. And then uh, I also think that 3D can really lend itself to training materials both inside the company with the inside sales people or online customer service, as well as using it for YouTube and using it uh, for in-store brick and mortar training, which is kind of something that's always done with brands. Um, I do think brands can do a little bit more of that with their customer engagement within the store. Uh, but we really do have the ability to teach the consumer a little bit more about fit concerns, why something fits, why something doesn't fit. Um, of course, there's this thing of your body's not wrong, the, the product's wrong, and that is exactly correct. Your body is your body, but you need to understand how to shop for your body because products are designed for different body types. Um, so shape is a really, really important tool that I use in 3D design. And I think more 3D designers should be designing in, uh, you know, realistic sizes that are the gross majority of consumers. So in America, it's a size 18 is the average American woman's size. Um, just four years ago, it used to be a 16. So if we're actually designing for that customer, we should be designing 3D in that size uh, and really being smarter about our approach to the product offering and educating the consumer. So I hope you found this informative. Uh, for more information, you can reach out to me at katie at ksapparelldesign.com or find me uh, on LinkedIn uh, under Katherine Schildmeyer. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.